Charles F. Sukowski, UB's Provost and Executive Vice President for Academic Affairs. Provost Sukowski is an internationally recognized scholar in chemical engineering and a member of the National Academy of Engineering. As the university's second ranking officer, Provost Sukowski is responsible for overseeing all academic and academic support programs. He is a deep believer in the power of higher education and research to improve society and is committed to providing the transformative educational experiences, growing UB's impact on interdisciplinary excellence and meaningful engagement, and enhancing UB's strength as a truly global university. Under his leadership since 2012, the university has transformed its general education program, increased international and experiential learning opportunities, significantly improved graduation rates, grown and diversified the student body, and enhanced faculty research productivity and impact. Provost of Good morning, everyone. Uh, I'm, I'm terribly impressed um, that you're all here this morning. It's um, rainy, it's cold, and it's early on a Saturday morning. And yet you're here to um, talk about and think about what is a um, very deep problem in our community, and one that um, we collectively need to think about how we're going to solve. But we're here today to talk about igniting hope, building a just community with a culture of health and equity. And uh, today you'll look into the origins of health disparities that um, give rise to, uh, in Erie County, African Americans um, are nearly two times more likely to die before the age of 75 than whites. And this is um, an appalling statistic. And uh, as members of the community, uh, we need to think about that and understand its origins and how we can solve it. As a public research university deeply embedded in um, Buffalo, we have the responsibility to help address this problem. At UB, we are committed to um, pursuing impactful research, education, and engagement uh, that respond to the most important and challenging problems that face our region and the world, uh, such as eliminating health care disparities that are um, tied to race. Um, however, like most of the major problems that face us, this problem, this, these issues, don't fall easily into areas that we call disciplines, um, nor just solutions. In order to respond, we have to think beyond our academic disciplines as they're currently defined and seek collaborations across disciplines and in the community in order to solve them. This understanding, um, for example, lies at the heart of UB's global health equity community of equity. Of community of excellence, which brings together faculty and from public health uh, and health sciences um, with disciplines uh, in architecture and planning um, and in engineering uh, to begin to address issues associated with the social, economic, political, and environmental conditions uh, that lead to inequities in healthcare outcomes around the globe. Also, UB's Food Systems Planning and Healthy Communities Lab, which works with global health equity, um, uh, is in another example of how we bring together a series of disciplines in order to address broad societal problems. Through the Food Lab, faculty and students build food systems in Buffalo and throughout the world that contribute to healthy and sustainable communities by ensuring access to healthy food. The belief underlying these efforts is that providing better health care options and better access to health care is important in order to fully address the issue of health equity in Buffalo um, and uh, in many communities uh, around the nation and around the world. But we also, beyond the um, health community, we also are going to need the scientists, the architects, and engineers to ensure that contaminants are not present in the built environment that could impact people's health. We need entrepreneurs, economists, and education experts to address the economic inequalities and educational inequalities um, and provide employment opportunities um, for all of our citizens. We need political and social scientists to study uh, and influence policy and law to ensure that all residents are protected equally. 
In addition, we do need the health professionals, social workers, and educators to understand and educate people about healthy living and preventative care. And then we also are going to need the artists and the humanists who understand how we gather in a society and how we are able to change human behavior that affect our health and our culture. As a comprehensive research university, at UB we have the breadth and depth of perspectives um, that are needed to address and partner in these complex problems and answer major questions that are facing our communities. UB alone cannot eliminate African-American health disparities in Buffalo. What we can do is understand the social, policy, and institutional origins of these disparities and partner with the community in developing and implementing solutions. And we are committed to building solutions and seeing that they are implemented so that we are able to um, move continuously towards a just society. I would like to acknowledge um, Reverend George Nicholas, who's here and going to speak next, um, and the African American Health Disparities Task Force, and the UB faculty and staff, along with our community partners, for their dedication to addressing this issue and for organizing this community event. UB looks forward to collaborating to promote health, health and well-being in all of our communities. And we're on. All right. Um, I just want to also welcome you. I, if I didn't say that word before, I want to make sure I say welcome to one and all of you. Uh, I'm Rita Hubbard Robinson, as I said earlier. I have a radio show that's on every Monday night at 7.30 p.m. And if you'd like to tune in, it's on 96.5 FM Power uh, Radio, also known as WUFO. So uh, you can tune in and just stay up to date with what it is that we're doing around health, health care, and preventative uh, health, social determinants of health, and population health. Those are the things that we talk about on that show. Next we have um, the pastor from the Lincoln Memorial United Methodist Church and the convener of this conference, Pastor George F. Nicholas. If he would, come on up. Uh, you can also find bios in your booklet of every committee member. So we don't want to spend a lot of time doing that. We want to get right into the root of the work. So without further ado, please give a round of applause for Pastor George Nicholas. It's so good to see all of you here uh, this morning and uh, your presence here this morning has already made this conference a success. What we're going to do today is we're going to have some, some uh, information that's given to you. Uh, we're going to have some examples from around the country. We brought scholars here who have, who have done the work that we're embarking on doing here in Buffalo. But the most important thing that we do today is we're building a movement. We're building a movement here that includes you and your gifts and your talents and your skills to bring health equity into this region. And we're going to give you the tools today to enable us and to empower us to eliminate race-based health disparities. Be very clear. It is my goal, my personal goal, and the goal of our task force not just to lower some numbers, but it is our ultimate goal here. And over time, and it may take a generation, but we do not believe that your race should be not only an underlying, but in this case, and we're going to talk about almost a determining factor on the quality of health in your living days and the longevity 
of your life. You know, we as preachers, we, we use a lot of uh, hyperbole and um, we exaggerate a lot um, in, our, in our oratory presentation. But today, I'm just going to deal with the facts. I don't have to amplify anything because the facts, the numbers, speak for themselves. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to talk for about 10 minutes and then I'm going to bring up two people who are much smarter than I. So let's, well, the first thing you learn today is when you have to give a presentation, bring some people up that are smarter than you to help you make your presentation. So Dr. Willie Underwood and Dr. Kenyatta Davis will come and give you some really good information uh, on this topic. How are you feeling today? This is a standard salutation when you greet someone. Many of you encounter people today who you have not seen in a while and inquired, how are you? Didn't you see somebody you haven't seen in a while and say, hey, how you feel? How, how are you doing? A quick triage into the condition of someone you encounter. Often the answer is the perfunctory fine. You ever tell somebody, oh, I'm fine, and you're really not? Well, for those who live in the city of Buffalo, for those who are African American who live in certain zip codes in the city of Buffalo, men, women, and children, the honest answer would be dramatically different from a white person who lived in other parts of the region. An African American would respond with a litany of challenges that would describe their daily existence. They might start with a brief medical history. They might talk about their high blood pressure and how their sugar is up and how they're struggling with respiratory illnesses and how they have infections and afflictions. They might share about their economic challenges. They, they might talk about being unemployed or underemployed. They, they might talk about their housing challenges. And if they have children or grandchildren in public schools, they might share the anxiety of sending their child to a failing school. I couldn't imagine doing that. The, the feeling that I would have within my spirit to dress my child to send them to a school that's on a list somewhere that says that it's underperforming. They themselves or someone else in their family would be, might be caught up in the criminal justice system that would have uncertain outcomes. You know, you don't have to be guilty to go to jail in our community. <laughs> I, you know that. And so when you ask someone who lives in the inner city of the city of Buffalo or the inner city of the city of Lackawanna or the inner city of the city of Niagara Falls or the inner city of Nashville or the inner city of Baltimore, they might say, you ask them, how are you? They might tell you, I'm sick and tired of being tired and sick. And this is the reality that far too many people in the African-American community here in this great city deal with. You know, following the defeat of the Nazis and the establishment of the United Nations in 1945, world leaders declared that one measure of progress of humanity was the health of all humans. So on April 7th, in 1948, the World Health Organization was formed. And its mission and its vision and its purpose was clear. The right to the highest attainable standards of health implies a clear set of legal obligations on states to ensure appropriate conditions for the employment of, of health, enjoyment of health for all people without discrimination. The right to health is one of a set of internationally agreed human rights standards and it is inseparable or indivisible from these other rights. This means achieving the right to health is both central to and dependent upon the realization of other human rights to food, housing, work, education, information, and participation. The right to health, as with other rights, includes both freedoms and entitlements. 
Freedoms include the right to control one's health and body, for example, sexual and reproductive rights, and to be free from interference, for example, from torture or non-consensual medical treatment and experimentation. Entitlements include the right to a system of health protection that gives everyone, someone say everyone, an equal opportunity to enjoy the highest attainable level of health. So when we give the honest answer to how African Americans are feeling 60 years later after the establishment of the World Health Organization, a people who have survived enslavement, the black codes, Jim Crow, redlining, now has a community health profile that reveals an immoral truth. Infant mortality among blacks is almost three times the rates of whites. That's a pro-life issue. Asthma, hospita hospitalizations for black children is more than four times that rate of whites. The percent of premature deaths in people younger than 75 was nearly double for blacks than whites. Black women are less likely to get breast cancer than white women, but are more likely to die from it. And a black woman with a health insurance has the same health outcomes as those of other communities without it. And the main factors around this, Dr. Taylor, is region, location, African Americans residing in the inner city of Buffalo have exponentially higher rates of serious and chronic diseases, creating a premature mortality rate, which is an alarming 300% higher than whites in other parts of the region. So the root causes of this human rights violation, and yes, I said that, the condition of black buffalo, the health of black buffalo, is a violation of human rights and are not rooted in individual behavior of people who have, been, who have endured enslavement in this hemisphere from 1509 to the legal but not economic emancipation in 1865. But it is rooted in the social determinants of health. Say that with me. Social determinants of health. That's why we're here. Now the social determinants of health are the complex integrated and overlapping social structures and economic systems that are responsible for most health inequities. These social structures and economic systems include the social environment, the physical environment, the health services, and structural and societal factors. Social determinants of health are shaped by the distribution of money, power, and resources throughout local communities, nations, and the world. When these factors, are, these factors are infected with structural, historical, and institutional, and continual racism, then the only expected outcomes would be the dramatic race-based health disparities. These, at one level, these health disparities are alarming. But if you look at it from a scientific perspective and understand the social dynamics of what goes on in our community, these disparities would be expected. And that's our reality. So if we were to bring a charge to the United Nations, to the World Health Organization, that folks better deal with me here, because it's not a long trip to go to New York City, to the UN. And those of us who remember Malcolm's tragedy, remember? You know, and so this is a crisis that is not just a crisis that can be addressed by health fairs, balloons, and coffee cups. But this is a structural problem that is causing the death of people who live in African American communities and people who look like me and look like many of you. But it's not just our issue to solve. It's all of our issues. So I'm going to bring up Dr. Underwood now, who's going to give you more detail about the steps, because I really want you to get this understanding of the condition 
of our people here in this region. And then after Dr. Underwood, after you complete your talk, Dr. Davis, right there. <laughs> she will share about women's health. And then I'll come back and we'll give you your call to action. Surely race and gender has played a role in it. 
social determinants of health. We look at 70% of the Erie County Department of Health clinic population comes from five zip codes. And those zip codes are 204, 206, 211, 212, 215. Unemployment is significantly higher in these zip codes in these counties of New York. The median household income per capita income is about half of that of Erie County in the level of these, of at least of these three of these five zip codes. Race and ethnicity distribution is also very different in those zip codes compared to the rest. When you look at disparities in the community, whether you look at race, ethnicity, education, social economic status, median household income per capita income are all about half of the Erie County income levels in three or five of these zip codes. where you look at race, ethnicity, income, socioeconomic status are all evident in these areas. As expected, health outcomes are significantly poor than those in the, in, in the county as a whole. As an example, in, two, in, in zip code 215, there are significantly higher poverty rates and is primarily composed of higher percentage of blacks. Preventive quality indicators, zip code 215, hospital Admissions rates are 150% higher than expected. Hospital admission rates for blacks are 210% higher, while those of whites are 55% that up. So for whites, there are less, and for blacks, they're 210% higher. And again, that has a significant financial cost, not to just the community, but also to the region as a whole. Not only are unemployment and education lacking in the zip codes, but we can't find primary care doctors in those zip codes as well. When you look at the area that is greater than 40% poverty, you, can, you don't see any primary care doctors, however, you see them there are numerous where the, where the poverty rate is less than 20%. What about the 16% who are eligible to receive Medicare? Well, we know when we look at national data, black Medicare patients are more likely than whites to live in areas where their medical procedure rates and quality of care are low. Even if you have a qualified physician who cares for those patients, they are less likely to have the resource necessary to provide the competent care to them, or better yet, refer them to specialists like me. Buffalo is no exception. When you look at look at the the, high, the top five risks of death: cancer, heart disease, unintentional injury, chronic respiratory disease, and diabetes. And that's for this region. In a region that has a national comprehensive cancer. Can I say it again? Yeah, yeah, yeah. In a place that has a nationally recognized comprehensive cancer center, we put cancer in the highest mortality. Next. Cardiovascular disease, the leading cause of death in Erie County. 
the rates of stroke deaths in this region is higher, nearly 60% higher than aggregated in New York State. Erie County residents experience a 33% 30, higher disease death in the United, than the U.S. average, and significantly influenced by race and income. Now, I'm not going to stand here and say what I want to say. Uh, <laughs> we got a cardiovascular institute. 